Welcome to Final Fantasy XII Part 136. Today we're going to take on both Pisca Diamond and Catablepus. Hopefully I'll get something better than what I got the last episode as far as rewards is concerned. But even he's, is telling Vaughn about his brother named Ashcroft who became evil and ended up becoming Pisca Diamond. Now for those of you who don't know, Pisca Diamond was in the previous Final Fantasy games and he is a rather annoying enemy. Especially in 3. But I'm going to keep my cool, I'm going to keep my cool. He's nowhere near as bad as this game, in this game, I promise you that. But you know what that means, right? We'll have to go to the Giravagan. In a place called the Gate of Fire. For those of you who don't know what the Gate of Fire is, it's the area where we were fighting Tyrant. And the area right before the Great Crystal. Oh, we'll be going back there too. But thankfully, when we go to the Great Crystal one more time, it'll be one more time. Because the only thing left there is Ultima. And there should be no reason for me to go back. Also, I can only finish the Henry Mines one more time because Zodiac will be the only reason why I'm going there anyway. There's not that many times I can visit a place. But the Pharos, I'll probably have to visit it two, maybe three times. One of which will be the extras video, and that will be Phoenix. Seeing as how I've already beaten the Shadow Seer anyway. I just wanted to show off what the battle with Phoenix looked like without the Shadow Seer, and that's all it is. Anyway, <clears throat> now it's off to that horrible place again. I really don't feel like visiting this place, but I'm gonna have to. Now, here we are in the Gate of Fire, and there's Piscata! Son of a bitch, it's causing- it's casting death! Ugh! Just- just- Ugh! Just like most Pisca Diamonds- Well, just like most of Pisca Diamonds reincarnations, it's being annoying! Okay. I'm gonna calm down. Cause I'm starting to stutter. Anyway. Here's the deal with Pisca Diamond. He's just like Mind Flayer. With the exception that he's weaker as far as HP is concerned. That move. That move is a bitch. I hate Invert. However, unlike... Mind Flayer, you cannot Berserk Pisca Diamond, even if you wanted to. He's immune to it, as you will see here. But he's almost dead. I'm not kidding, it doesn't take much to kill him. Well, he's... well, he missed the... well, he dodged the first one. But Pisca Diamond is definitely immune to Berserk. And he was about to use Solitude, which would have been... Ha! I got it. Solitude. But still, it would have been evil had he used it, but... No, he won't get to see it. Instead, we get our reward. But fall not victim to your own strength, or your companions will know the same despair as I... Do not become as my brother. And I think that's for Ash, not Vaughn. Anyway, we've got the best shot in the game, the Dark Shot, because it's pretty powerful for guns. Even though it does cast, even though it does have the Dark Elemental on it, it's still pretty decent. Not to mention we got Escape Mode. And honestly, I could have used that Escape Mode earlier on. 
But I wasn't thinking. Anyway. Now. It's time for us to head to Jahara. One last time. And why you ask? Well. Jahara has two reasons for me to be there. And I'll get rid of both of those reasons in this part. One of those reasons is Catoblepus. His petitioner is in Jahara. Another reason? Why? It's to... Well, you'll see when we get there. And after I'm finished. But anyway. On to Catablepus' petitioner. Which is War Chief Supinello. Hey, that name sounds familiar. That's the guy you had to save when you first came here. He would have recovered by the time you got here anyway. That's pretty much it. Honestly, Supernova does not... Eat. Well, Supernova doesn't really die. He just keel over and he'll be badly injured. But still, he'll request you to kill this thing. And... The thing about Catablip is you'll never be able to find him unless you actually look hard enough. Trust me, it took me a while to find this damn thing when I first played it. <coughs> it's in the least, and it isn't the place where you least expect it. He's going to join, and this will be possibly the last person that's going to join you in a hunt. So, with that said, let's head on to Zertanan. And we've come to Catablepus' area. I'll show you where Catablepus is after the fight, because it won't take me long to destroy this thing. Really, it won't. The level I'm at right now, I can kick this thing's ass no problem. Well, I don't need the gambits now, I brought them all! Anyway, Catablepus is in this area here. Oh, and look, we leveled on the way up here. So let's see what kind of stats that Catablepus is susceptible to. Hmm, I'm kind of curious. Because I haven't done uh, too much reading on him, I just know that he's pretty tough. Son of a bitch. You can put him to sleep? Wow, just wow. Oh, funny story, Catablepus happens to be weak to Earth. Ah, 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 that's so funny. <coughs> that's real funny, he's weak to Earth. Lovely. Well, all he's susceptible to is blind. That's it. Well, sleeping blind because if you try to use sleep, it's not going to help. And unlike the behemoths over in Garavagan, Cattle Bleepus does not do 10% to itself when it hits enemies. And I can't believe that's all I was able to steal. That sucks. If 
It's almost dead. And it's done. Hey, funny story though. Catablepus was in the Necro Hall of Nobodies when you were about to fight Fury. And now we're done with this hunt, so War Chief Supernello is gonna go back to Shahara to reward you. Which means you're left to fend for yourself until you get there. That's all well and good. Now let's show you how to Now let's show you how I got here. Obviously, there is an area here that nobody knows about. That has an explosion trap. The area that's unknown is hidden behind a sandfall that is right behind the safe point. No, that's right past the safe point, actually. Yeah, past it, not behind it. Here's the area. And again, you can't see this area because the sandfall was blocking your vision. But it's right past the save point. That's how you're going to get to him. Now, we go back to Jahara to collect our reward and something else. And now, the war chief is happy. He was able to kick this thing's ass, but he only did this purely out of vengeance and not out of help. Yikes. Well, it's pretty sad, actually. He had pride in the war but he was prideful, he was arrogant, he went in, Catablepus kicked his ass, and then he posted the bill. Because his brother got hurt. That's just... That is a sad tale. Man. Well, you had to have people to help you out, because you couldn't take the thing on yourself. And we kicked its ass in... Less than two minutes of the fight? Wow, you're garbage. But nonetheless, we get Volcano. And an Arctic win, which is... And which the Volcano is probably the second most powerful bomb in the game. next to the Costanellos. Now then, here's why we're here for the last time. This dude, Geomancer Yugolo. After getting 10 espers, now you can talk to him to unlock the way to Zodiac. You see, I actually have 11, so I was going to get it out of the way. Anyway, I'm going to deal with Zodiac last. Dead last. Because he is really, really hard. But nonetheless, I'm going to call it a game. After I finish. Well, since I finished this, now I only have seven marks left. Two of which I'll be taking on in the next part. And that would be Roblon and Goliath. Oh joy, now we're gonna get to the harder marks. This is RVMan985. Peace out.